Hello, it's five days before Christmas and I haven't baked a single cookie. So we're changing that today. Here we go. Hello you all, I hope you're doing well. I haven't baked any cookies yet this season. So I thought it's about time to do that. We're having friends over on Friday night. So I need to get some cookies made so I have something to put out. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Plus I wanna have some for the holidays. I'm sure Molly and the kids will want to bake some. And they usually, honestly, sometimes we do it together. Sometimes they're just like, I'm gonna bake. And it's like, I'm in the middle of doing something else. So I'm sure there'll be cookies here, but I at least want to contribute and uh, make some. So uh, obviously, you know we love making cutout cookies. Those I am gonna wait until the kids are here because it's so much work and you know the icing of them i mean we did a ton of them at thanksgiving so i'm guessing we'll do more cutouts we may not do royal icing we might just do sugars colored sugars haven't decided that yet but i'm not doing it while the kids are here or not here um hannah went to a sleepover last night molly's at work and gabe's not home from college yet so i decided i'm gonna do some easier cookies because i'm still kind of tag teaming with my work like i'm going back and forth my i'm point, pointing over here because i have my work set up at the kitchen table because even though i have vacation time there's just things i want to get done so they're not like lingering over the new year so i'm gonna kind of do a little work while i do this so and i'm gonna film so I'm not gonna film myself doing work though, that would be boring. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna make some Swedish butter cookies. That is a cookie that I first learned to make from my friend, Jen. She lives here in Minnesota. I met her here in Minnesota. She is fully Swedish and she taught me about these cookies and they're delicious. They're very simple, but very delicious. So I'm gonna make some of those. I also wanna do jam print cookies and possibly lemon trees, uh, which I have a recipe for. They look like this and i haven't decided but chris recently told me i because i don't know if i have the lemon extract i have to look uh chris recently told me that he likes lemon cookies which i never knew i thought i was the only one who likes them so i very rarely make them because i'm like i don't need to eat that many cookies but apparently he likes them too so that would be good i'm gonna make some at some point if it's not today another point in time and yeah i showed you this this is my mrs fields book i think i've shown this to you before I love this cookie book. Uh, the kids actually bought me a hardcover copy a few years ago, but I kind of prefer this one. It's full of like stained pages and like family history, you know? You know how that is. I have talked about maybe putting it in a binder, like, cause most of the pages are out anyway and I could punch holes in them. And then, or if I didn't punch holes, I could put them in sleeves, like page sleeves, but I just have never done it. So anyway, but, I wrote the Swedish butter cookie recipe, which I pull from online usually, but I wrote it on a card for you. I'm gonna hold that up to the camera and you can take a screenshot of it if this is a cookie that you really want to make. And I'll flip it over and show you the, the other side of instructions. Sorry, my writing's not the best. Uh, and also I made a little mistake here, but I changed it. So that should say flour and soda, which is what it says now, but there's a little We'll scratch out here that was a mistake so anyway you combine the flour and soda and gradually add to the cream mixture but anyway so let's go ahead and start with the swedish butter cookies so my microwave has a softening feature so i've softened my butter in the microwave if you don't have a softening feature you can just leave it on the counter for a little while and it'll soften you can put it near your oven if you're making something else or near your stove if you're making something don't get it too close because you'll liquidize it but <laughs> But I am fortunate that I have the soften feature. So I've already softened my butter and I've already measured my uh, one cup of sugar. Not in here, that's the flour. Don't put the wrong thing in, Nicole. So this is my one cup of sugar. I'm gonna combine this with my butter and we're going to cream it for five to seven minutes. So it's kind of like a long process. I have my KitchenAid. Oh, and I'll turn the camera. Let me do that so you can see what I'm doing. So there's my butter and I'm just gonna pour in my sugar okay and then we will cream this for five to seven minutes now i'm going to add two teaspoons of maple syrup so this is not for the flavor apparently i was reading about it 
apparently back in Sweden, back in the day, back in the olden days, <laughs> you would add sugar syrup to your cookies and that just helped with the texture. It's not to make it taste like maple syrup. So, because actually back in the olden days, maple syrup wasn't available. It was actually just a sugar syrup, but I don't have sugar syrup because I'm here in the US. And so the recipe that I pull from as maple syrup doesn't make the cookies taste mapley. It just helps with the texture. So we're just gonna add that and mix it. Give it a little scrape. Should have done that before I started it again. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You know, real life baking. Real life baking, I'm not a professional. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna combine our flour and soda. So it's one teaspoon of baking soda combined with two cups of flour, which I've already done. And then we're gonna just start this and add this slowly to the mixture. I'm gonna do the rest by hand because I don't like to risk over mixing. Because I think that makes your, your uh, that can make your cookies, any cookie, chewy if you over mix. So, just gonna pull this out get as much butter off as we can and then we'll just mix by hand the rest of the way and I actually like to use a pastry blender which I'm going to grab my pastry blender this is a very useful tool you don't have one it's one thing I recommend if you do any baking I recommend having one of these in your kitchen I use it frequently it's useful for cutting butter into recipes. All right, especially if you're gonna make a pie crust, super useful. Well, that looks pretty good. We are gonna roll it into a ball once we feel like it's blended well enough. And then we're gonna divide the dough into eight portions, which I'll show you in a minute. So here I've got my dough and I'm going to gather it into a ball or maybe two. It doesn't really matter. Eventually I just want one big ball of dough. Okay, so here's my dough. Whoops. And I just wanna kind of, this doesn't matter at all. I just wanna get it to a point where I can divide it properly. So, I'm just gonna keep doing this. And you want it to be even. <laughs> oh, Penny. The goal here is we just wanna be able to divide it into eight equal portions. Ish, equal ish. <laughs> so. Okay, that should do it. And I'm just gonna take, I have a cheese knife. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna cut. And you could do squares, you could do, you know, logs. I'm probably just gonna do logs because it's easier, but I'm gonna go in half because that's two and divide each of those in half-ish. The cheese cutter works really well. So now I have one, two, three, four. Now I have to cut each of these in half. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're actually gonna, oops, that one was a little crooked. Um, you're gonna take each of your logs and you're going to roll it, or your, each of your pieces, you're gonna roll it in a ball and then roll it into about a one inch log. Kind of like, kind of like that. Again, it does not have to be perfect because here's what's gonna happen. You're going to cut Wow, you're going to bake these logs, they will flatten out, and then you cut your cookies into, your, into um, like squares or rectangles, whatever it winds up being. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make my eight one inch logs, and then we'll put them on parchment paper, whoops. And if it breaks apart, you just, you know, again, you don't wanna overwork it, but you also want it to stay together in the oven. So you just do this. 
and then we'll put it on parchment paper and bake them. And it's a pretty low temperature. It's, you saw in the recipe, 300 oven. So that's pretty low. And I think it's like 25 minutes. Yeah, 25 minutes at a low temperature, basically, is how we're gonna get these done. See, and it's breaking apart, so I'm just gonna kinda re-roll that one a little. Okay, now I'm gonna put parchment paper on my baking sheet. You don't have to, I think it works better, but you know, if you don't have it, you don't have it. And if you're looking for it, I know Reynolds makes some. And I think Walmart sells the Reynolds brand. Fortunately, Target also makes some and they make their store brand. So it's a little cheaper. I think the grocery stores also carry the, the Reynolds brand. So, And then you want to put these on here. My cooking sheet is a little bent, a little warped over from the years. But you want to put them about um, three inches apart. So that's like one, two. That's probably about three inches maybe. Be a little more generous than your four fingers, but about that. I'll do that. Oops. And then I'm gonna need to use a second cookie sheet for the other two, because otherwise they'll join together. The good thing about parchment paper is that you can use it over and over. Like, I, mean, I usually use it like for at least two batches. It will start to brown, and then you wanna like switch it out. But especially at such a low temperature, I'll probably be able to reuse this at least another time each for a different cookie, as long as it's not like a conflict of flavors or something. Okay, so I have those in the oven. I set a timer for 20 minutes just so I can check to make sure they're not getting too dark. But then uh, once they're done, I will pull them out and we'll do the next step. Okay, the other ones are in the oven still. These came out um, a little sooner. These started on the bottom, so they baked a little quicker. But basically you wanna square off your edges just a little bit like that. And then you just cut them into strips of sorts, whatever you think would make a nice sized cookie. You can like completely square them, but personally I think that wastes too much cookie. So I like to just kinda of do it like this. Oops. I'm gonna square off this edge a little. These are a little bigger, but that's okay. After you cut them, you um, dust them with confectioner sugar. And then you just move them to a wire rack. And the cook gets to eat the little bits. <laughs> Let's check the other ones. And here's the other tray. I'm trying not to burn myself because it just came out of the oven. These are a little cracked. It's probably because of how I rolled the dough. They did have to bake longer because there was more on here. But we're just going to trim off the ends like we did. So the same steps. I got a little skinnier, but that's okay. If someone wants a smaller cookie. This is the only snow we've gotten this year. <laughs> it has not snowed here in Minnesota yet. And here are the Swedish butter cookies. Probably should have made a double batch, but again, I had to conserve my butter. I can always, this is a super easy cookie, so I could always make another batch pretty, pretty quickly. But they're so good. I did taste one and they're delicious. If you're looking for an easy cookie that's delicious, this is the one. Give it a try. Okay, on to the jam prints. Okay, next I'm gonna make the Swedish tea rings or the jam print cookies. I'm gonna hold the recipe up again for you if you wanna take a screenshot. This is from a website called lanebakery.com and it's a new recipe. I haven't tried this one before, but I'm gonna give it a go because um, the one, the jam prints that I usually make in here, they're not my favorite. They're okay, they're not my favorite. So I thought, ah, I will try something new this year. New to us this year, we tried a jam print cookie at the Swedish Institute, the American Swedish Institute. There's a vlog about that on this channel. And um, so while we were there, we had a jam print cookie, but it was rolled in nuts, in almonds. 
And so this recipe calls for pecan, pecans, pecans. I don't know how you say it, pecans, different people from different places in the US. Say it different ways. I don't know what the right one is. But anyway, um, but we're gonna try almonds because that's what the Swedish Institute did and we loved it. They were so good. So that will be a little twist with this, this recipe. So I'll turn the camera around and we'll make these jam print or Swedish tea ring cookies. This recipe is yields only 16 cookies. So I'm actually going to double this one. So you could see if you look at that recipe that I put up on the screen um, that I held up there, it's a half cup of butter, but I'm gonna do a full cup of butter because I'm going to double and hopefully get like 30 cookies because 16 cookies will last like a minute in my house. Okay, so we have our butter and it says to cream the butter and brown sugar. Let me get brown sugar and I'll be back. It calls for a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm going to double that to a half cup. And then we're going to cream this till it's light and fluffy, which on the other cookie took five to seven minutes. I'm going to guess it's going to take the same. So I will cream this and come back to you. Okay, it's all creamed and ready to go, but I was looking at my recipe. I don't know if I copied it wrong or if the blog that I copied it out of left it off their list, but they never said to add the flour. So I am I inserted it where it usually goes, which is after you cream the butter and sugar, you usually add the flour. So that's where I put it. Guessing that's probably right, because then all it has you doing is adding the egg yolk and scooping and rolling the dough. So the flour's gotta go in there at some point. So here's a better screenshot with that step added unless you can just remember and add it in yourself when you're making your recipe. But anyway, so here we go. It's all creamed. Uh, so I'm gonna add my flour and then my egg yolk and we'll move on. And I already separated, because you need the egg whites for a later step. So I already separated out my yolks and my whites. Let's do a little scraping action here. egg yolk and I'm just going to use my pastry blender to just do the last little bit here like I did before I just like to make sure that the butter's cut in well to the flour, you know, mixed in well with the flour, but a spoon doesn't always do the best job, so. My cookie scoop seems to be MIA, so my small one, so I'm gonna use this, but I'm only gonna do like half, half full, and then just roll them, which is fine. I just want them to generally be the same size. That looks a little small. Let's get to a size that we feel like we can properly stick our thumb in. That looks good. That's about a one incher, right? Maybe a little bigger. So maybe I'm doing this big scoop, but like a, a three quarters of the way full. And I should get about, what is it? 32 cookies. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll these into balls and then I'll come back to you. I have my egg whites. I have, these are my ground up nuts. I used my vintage nut grinder to grind them. And I'm just gonna put them in here. And so then basically we're gonna take our egg white, I'm sorry, our little bolly, and kind of dump it in there and dump it in there and roll it around. I don't know that I have enough almonds, we'll have to see. And they recommend using parchment paper for these because the egg whites make the cookies stick. So just a little FYI on that. I have this tray done. I, or actually I missed one. I'm actually going to put this one in because this is a two step baking process. Like you bake them for six minutes pull them out, redo the thumbprint, because I guess it starts to collapse, and then bake them for the rest of the time. 
So I'm just gonna do one tray at a time just because it has multi steps, but I am going to use my thumb and make a little thumbprint in each one. That's what it says to do. And then I'll have to, I don't know, how do you do this when they're hot, right? I feel like you're gonna burn your finger, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes on the step two of this baking process. Okay, here's my cookies after six minutes. The jam prints look pretty good. There's my six minute timer. Alexa, stop. So I don't really think I need to go back. I don't know, maybe on some of them, but for the most part, they look pretty good. I did it just because the recipe says so, but if you didn't do it, you'd probably still be able to put jam on there and it would be fine. Okay, I'm gonna close this up and bake it for 11 to 14 minutes. Here they are pre-jammed. After I showed you me pushing them down again, like with the second tray, I noticed you do actually need to push them down again. You have to wait longer than I did. So I think on that first batch, it said six minutes. I would actually wait till it's like eight minutes and then do the second push down, at least where I am anyway. That's when the cookies were actually baking and rising. I think when I pushed them down, they still hadn't really baked much yet. So I would say that is a good step to do but just do it a little later than I did. So this is what they look like before the jam. I'm gonna go ahead and get my jam and we'll put it in. Chris and I decided to try some apricot jam prints this year because we both love the uh, apricot hamantaschen from the Cecil's Bakery I showed you. So I was like, we should try apricot in our jam print cookies and see what we think. So they say like a, I think it said like a quarter teaspoon. I'm just kind of taking like a little bit on the end of a spoon and scraping it down with the other spoon. I'm just using, I should have showed you that first. I'm just using, you know, jam that you get at the grocery store. If you wanted to be really fancy, you could make your own or use some kind of special kind, but this is just Smucker's. It's good enough for me. I also saw, and we tasted one, at the Swedish Institute that was lemon curd. That was so delicious, but I don't have lemon curd and I'm not exactly sure where I can get it. My grocery store might have it. Target does not have it. Um, yeah, so maybe next year I'll plan ahead a little better so I have lemon curd on hand when I make these. Oops, oh, I messed that one up. Let's see if I can fix it. A little bit, a little bit. And these keep for like, I think it's two to four days or you can freeze them. Again, not at really an issue. I mean, I'm sure they'll be fine on Christmas if they're still here but we're having um, friends over on Friday, which is today is Wednesday. So my goal is to just have some cookies to put out then and whatever I have left on Christmas, I'll put out. But I mean, it's really, as long as you don't see mold growing on them, it's probably fine. But if you wanted to make them ahead, like in large quantity, you could freeze them. Okay, and there they are, all jammed up. A few minutes, I'll taste one and tell you what I think, because this, again, this is a new recipe, so. All right, it's a tasty cookie, very tasty. 
I do miss the glaze. I might do some glaze on some of them. I'm gonna let Chris taste and see what he thinks. It's a very tasty cookie, nice texture to it, but I just personally miss that little pop of extra sugary goodness. But that's just me. And also I did want to add that these are slightly different in that you put the jam on after you bake the cookies. The ones I've made before, you always bake the cookies with the jam. I don't know what the difference is. Um, yeah, but the Swedish ones and even the ones that were at the Institute, they, they, the jam was added after the cookie was baked. So I don't know. It's just a difference, I guess, but it's a very good cookie. I like it. Those Swedish butter cookies are outstanding. Those are definitely my favorite of the two that I made today, but these will be good and they look really pretty. And anyway, I hope this was fun for you. I hope you're getting some baking done or enjoying someone else's baked goods and I'll see you in the next video. I'm hoping still to put up a house tour before the holiday. It will either be on this channel or my other channel. I haven't really decided yet. It might be on the other channel. We'll see. Anyway, I'll let you know about it over here if I do put it up over there. But for now, enjoy your last days of Christmasing if you celebrate Christmas. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Chris is the taste tester on the Swedish butter cookies. He, he's had these before. He probably just doesn't remember. Go ahead. But I'm, I'm afraid because I'm afraid for this tray. <gasps> it may not last long. That's a good cookie. Aren't they so good? You keep the coffee brewing <laughs> and these, I won't eat regular food. So you know how we had Fika at the Swedish Institute. If you missed that vlog, we went to the Swedish Institute in Minneapolis and had coffee and conversation. And these are recommended for Fika. But that's exactly what you're saying. It's like, get the pot of coffee, a little plate of the, aren't they so good? These are bad. <laughs> I know. I wanted it to try that. <laughs> really not good. I was like, you're going to want to eat the whole it tray. It is morning. <laughs>